The murder of 14-year-old Emmett Till in Mississippi influences actions around civil rights even today. Accused by a white woman of making sexual advances, Till was kidnapped, brutally beaten, a cotton gin fan with barbed wire wrapped around his neck, and he was thrown into the Tallahatchie River to drown. The woman's husband and brother-in-law were tried for the murder and then acquitted by an all-white jury. Later, they would brag that they did, in fact, commit the crime. As we reported last week, the woman who accused 14-year-old Emmett Till now says she lied. Till's death is credited with galvanizing the civil rights movement, and 60 years later, it's still inspiring a new generation. Here's Diane Roberts. Emmett Till was murdered August 28, 1955. Eight years later to the day, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his I Have a Dream speech at the March on Washington. The date was no accident. Dr. King, Rosa Parks, and many other leaders in the civil rights movement pointed to Till's killing as the defining moment in the civil rights movement. And it is still inspiring young people to help right the wrong. The only version of civil rights I was taught was that Rosa Parks sat down and Martin Luther King stood up and everybody was free. 30-year-old Patrick Weems grew up in Mississippi. And it wasn't until I was 18 and I took a specific course on African-American studies that I learned about Emmett Till. When I learned about what happened, the injustices, but also that young people made change, it compelled me to want to be a part of that change too. Determined, Patrick said about the work of preserving the Mississippi courtroom at the center of the Till story and the task of making amends. It was here in this courtroom that two men got off for murder. And so we decided that we needed to begin by apologizing to the Till family before we could begin with our museum. And out of that apology, we decided to restore our courthouse back to the way it looked in 1955 and open up the Emmett Till Interpretive Center. That was 10 years ago, when as a 20-year-old college student at Ole Miss, Patrick took the lead in seeking racial reconciliation. So in 55, uh, Carolyn Bryant told this sensationalized story, and she did it to kind of persuade people to think that what her husband did was okay. Played into the myth that black men are, are rapists, uh, will come after white women, and white men, women need to be protected. And because Emmett Till can't tell his story, Patrick does every day in his role as the center director. After the trial, people were embarrassed, ashamed that this had happened in their community, especially after the two men confessed to the murder. So for us to finally break that silence was for us a big step towards uh, healing. Patrick says there was no justice for Emmett in this courtroom, but he wants to educate future generations in hopes of racial equality and equal justice. For us to be a part of actually coming to the table and doing the hard work of telling the truth and speaking openly about race, I, my hope is that we empower communities across this nation to look in their own backyards and understand how our history is impacting our current conversations around race. Patrick Weems told us earlier this week he'll participate in a unity rally February 27th on the steps of the Mississippi State Capitol. The goal? To honor the life and legacy of Emmett Till and seek an official apology from the state. On the National Mall in Washington, for Matter of Fact, I'm Diane Roberts.